From then on, my mother-in-law came every day and started rummaging through the refrigerator. You're so cheeky to buy such a good-looking fish as a daughter-in-law. Confiscat. The fish that was supposed to be dinner that day was also taken away. However, this does not stop at just a little expensive thing. All seasonings such as olive oil and sugar are also taken away. She always says, don't be extravagant, but I gradually realized what was going on. I'm Hazel, 37 years old. I live in my parents-in-law's house while working from home. My husband's grandparents, parents, and we live in my parents-in-law's house. Currently, my grandparents originally lived on the parents' side, and my parents-in-law moved in, and we, the couple, moved to the child's side. Because of this situation, I thought that there would be no situation where we, the couple, and my parents-in-law would become overly intrusive. Actually, when I lived with Caleb, my husband, my parents-in-law didn't even bother to come to the child's side. At that time, my husband often left me alone and went to the parents' side. I'm going to have dinner with my father and mother today. I think my husband ate dinner on the parents' side about four days a week. He always told me at the last minute because it depended on his mood. I had already made the food, so I ate alone on the child's side and saved my husband's portion for the next day and managed to get by. At that point, I was wondering what kind of husband he was. Hazel is longing for a family because you became alone early. If you divorce me, you will lose your long-cherished family. So don't think about divorcing me. My husband always says that with confidence. When I was young, I lost both of my parents in a traffic accident and had no relatives. So I had a very strong longing for the existence of a family. My husband knew the circumstances and my feelings, so I was convinced that I would never ask for a divorce no matter how badly he treated me. I also thought, I only have dinner with my parents a few times a week, so I let my husband do whatever he wanted, which may not have been good. My completely arrogant husband gradually began to ignore me. Although he left all the housework to me, he never told me in advance about the presence or absence of dinner that day or the schedule for going out for a workplace drinking party. I'm also in charge of preparing for my husband's business trip, so I'm in trouble if he doesn't tell me in advance. As a result, there were many days when I had to prepare at the last minute and be in a hurry. You need to be aware that you are my wife and work properly. If you can't get along with people at work and get fired, how are you going to live? My husband said with a sigh mixed with a look of amazement as he watched me preparing eagerly. My husband seems to think that he is a splendid member of society, but from my point of view, he is not at all splendid. Because he can't even communicate simple content. In this day and age, even new employees know the importance of reporting, contacting, and consulting. He can't do any of these. Nevertheless, the reason why I didn't think of divorce at all was because of his baseless confidence that he didn't want to let me go. My husband likes me and needs me. I had such thoughts, so I never thought about getting a divorce. However, for my husband, I seemed to be a replaceable existence at any time, and he never seemed to think that I was important. I realized this when my husband's assignment was decided and I started living alone on the child's household side of my parents-in-law's house. I said that I wanted to go with him to his new job, but he refused me. I want you to take care of the house. If something happens to my father and mother, please help them. No matter what I said, I was told that, and in the end, I ended up living on the child's household side. It was the evening of the day when my husband went to his new job. When I was in the kitchen trying to make dinner, I was suddenly called from behind. Hey, Hazel. Wow. Usually, my mother-in-law never comes here without saying anything, so I was surprised and raised my voice. If I had been washing dishes, I think I would have dropped and broken them. Why are you so surprised? I'm sorry. I apologized while being flustered because my mother-in-law said so in a displeased tone. However, if someone suddenly comes and calls out loudly from behind, anyone would be surprised. I thought so in my mind, but I endured it without saying it. My mother-in-law didn't say anything to me with an unhappy face and suddenly opened the refrigerator. Oh. There's beer. This is confiscated. There's also salami. This is also confiscated. After looking inside, she opened the freezer next. Oh. 
Frozen wieners are also confiscated. You only have snacks. You're a drunkard. Um, what are you doing? Although we live together, we live in separate places. I was momentarily delayed in my reaction to my mother-in-law's unexpected behavior of coming here and rummaging through the refrigerator, taking out what caught her eye, and putting it in the bag she brought. I'm not letting you indulge in luxury. I was even more dumbfounded by my mother-in-law's first words. I haven't done anything because Caleb was here. I can't confiscate it if it's Caleb's. But now it's just you, so I can confiscate whatever I want. Confiscate whatever you want? What is this person talking about? I was confused by my mother-in-law's words, which she said as a matter of course. I also drink alcohol to take a break. Salami can be used in other dishes, and frozen wieners are convenient for bread. Even so, if they are taken away, there will be no color in my meals. This beer was something that my husband couldn't drink and left behind, but I kept it carefully to drink later. I never thought that my mother-in-law would take it away. Be aware of your position from now on. I'll check the refrigerator every day. I'm not doing anything excessive. You don't have to check it so much. You're noisy. It's the husband's job to discipline the bride, but Caleb is not here now. I'll teach you. Be grateful. I can't think of anything to be grateful, first of all, what kind of person is my mother-in-law who is trying to discipline her daughter-in-law? Satisfied with doing whatever she wanted, my mother-in-law quickly returned to the parents' household side. I called my husband that night. Hello, Caleb. I'm tired because I just got here. Don't call me. Before I could say the next word, he hung up. I thought I'd settle it with a message, so I sent him a message saying I had a consultation, but I only got a receipt and no reply. I'm busy here. I don't have time to listen to your consultation, my husband replied the next day. After that, my mother-in-law came every day and started rummaging through the refrigerator. You're so cheeky to buy such a good-looking fish as a daughter-in-law. Confiscat. The fish that was supposed to be dinner that day was also taken away. However, this does not stop at just a little expensive thing. All seasonings such as olive oil and sugar are also taken away. She always says, don't be extravagant, but I gradually realized what was going on. My mother-in-law probably finds shopping troublesome. This continued every day, with her coming before dinner. It's useless to cook if I can't eat what I want, I thought, so I stopped buying ingredients. Instead, I started ordering takeout. Hey, there's no food at all. My mother-in-law was angry when she saw the refrigerator with only water in it. I've lost the desire to buy anything because you steal everything I buy. I don't even have the energy to cook anymore. It's not like Caleb is starving and suffering, I said, fed up. Every day, no matter what I was doing, whether cooking, taking a bath, or working, my mother-in-law would invade the house, rummage through the refrigerator, and steal the ingredients. It's ridiculous to buy ingredients that are going to be stolen by a thief like her, even though she's on the same property. I suddenly rebelled against my mother-in-law, who had been obedient until now, and she turned red with anger. You're so cheeky for a daughter-in-law. You're the bride of this house. Are you going to defy your mother-in-law? What's so great about a mother-in-law? I think my mother-in-law is a housewife. She does the housework on the parents' side, but to put it the other way around, that's all she does. I'm living here, but it's my father-in-law, not my mother-in-law, who maintains the child's household side. And I've never asked my mother-in-law to help me with the housework. I've never asked my mother-in-law to do anything for me, and she's not doing anything herself, so why do I have to obey my arrogant mother-in-law? I couldn't understand anything my mother-in-law was saying. You say I'm defying you, but are you that great? I said emotionlessly, and my mother-in-law got angry again. I was fed up with the thief-like mother-in-law, the husband who wouldn't listen even if I wanted to consult, and the recent revelation. Get out. You'll divorce Caleb. I don't want to see the face of a rude daughter-in-law like you, my mother-in-law shouted, throwing the knee blanket on the nearby chair. You're just lazing around at home without working, and you're skipping housework as soon as your husband is gone. It's going to be a bad future. Yes, yes. 
That's right, I replied casually to my hysterically shouting mother-in-law. I work from home, but I didn't feel like explaining it to my mother-in-law. I sent a message to my husband that day. Your mother told me to leave, so I'm leaving. I also sent you the divorce papers, so fill them out and submit them. I got a read receipt immediately, but no reply. I didn't care at all about the lack of response because I thought it would be enough if he submitted the divorce papers properly. Three months later, I started living alone in a newly rented apartment. It has two rooms, one for work and one for private use. I can manage the on and off times perfectly, so work is more efficient than before, and the living environment is great. I received a call from an unknown number while enjoying my new life. Hello? When I answered the phone, a familiar voice spoke cheerfully. Oh, Hazel, have you repented yet? How does it feel to be kicked out and homeless? This voice belongs to that thief, my ex-mother-in-law. The 50-story high-rise apartment is the best. It's long and the room is clean, and above all, there's no thief in the house, I said only that and hung up the phone quickly. I didn't exchange phone numbers with my ex-mother-in-law, so I didn't register her number either. She must have asked my ex-husband for my number and called me. I have to reject this number. I didn't know how to set up call rejection, which I rarely do, and I was thinking about it when my ex-mother-in-law called me again. I touched various things, so I accidentally pressed the call button. Regretfully, I put the phone to my ear. Why are you hanging up? I'm your mother-in-law. She shouted in a pretty loud voice, and I sighed and nodded. Yes, yes, you're great. What's with that attitude? Mother-in-law is great, mother-in-law is great. It's just a stupid habit. Will you be satisfied if I praise you for now? My words made my ex-mother-in-law. What did you say? She screamed hysterically and complained all the time. I understand already. Is that all you can say, that mother-in-law is great or that my attitude is bad? Did you become senile? I'm tired of listening, so I'll hang up. I said that, and my ex-mother-in-law, who seemed to be trying to say the same thing again, muttered in a small voice, you're just a daughter-in-law, and didn't say the last word to make sure I didn't hang up. Instead, she made a childlike sound of. Ugh, money. Lend me money. What? I tilted my head at my ex-mother-in-law, who had suddenly spoken. You're living in a 50-story high-rise apartment with Caleb's money, aren't you? Then give me that money. It's impossible for a daughter-in-law to indulge in luxury. What are you talking about? I don't understand at all. Why would I live in an apartment with Caleb's money? And how can you have such a stupid idea? I said. Oh, you're stupid? What kind of language is that to use against your mother-in-law? When I said what I thought, my ex-mother-in-law raised her voice even louder. First of all, you are a stranger to me, so you are not my mother-in-law. What are you talking about? You just left home, so you're still Caleb's wife. It seems that my ex-mother-in-law did not know that my ex-husband and I had already divorced. I divorced him a long time ago because of your bullying and your son's infidelity so I won't lend you money. Never contact me again. My ex-mother-in-law seemed to be speechless, but I hung up the phone without hesitation. This time, I set up call rejection properly and decided to forget about my ex-mother-in-law. Although she was like that, I thought that if she knew that I was no longer a member of the family, she would stop contacting me. However, it seems that I overrated my ex-mother-in-law. A few days later, I received another call from a different number. I had been ignoring calls from unknown numbers since that incident, so I continued to ignore them. After ringing for a while, the caller began leaving a message on the answering machine. Since I wasn't talking directly to the other person, I listened to the voice again and found out that it was my ex-mother-in-law. I don't know if she borrowed my ex-father-in-law's mobile phone or got a new one, but I found out that my ex-mother-in-law was trying to contact me somehow. I'll forgive you for divorcing my son on your own. So come back soon. You will marry Caleb again. And you, you're making a lot of money with your telework, aren't you? Why did you hide it until now? This must have been what my ex-husband said. 
He probably talked about me being a useless wife in front of his parents and said that he was supporting me. However, after I divorced him, he quit my job and returned to his parents' home from his place of assignment. I think my ex-husband who lost his income blamed the ex-mother-in-law for driving me out. Half of the reason for deciding to divorce was that my ex-husband made a woman at his place of assignment and played around with work, but there was no way that ex-husband would admit his fault. So my ex-husband, who lost his source of income, blamed his mother. My ex-husband is in debt to pay me alimony, so it also affects the household budget of my ex-in-laws. In contrast, I earn $300,000 with my telework. My ex-husband, who still doesn't know my earnings, proposed that we separate our finances, and I took proper measures for this, so there was no property division. Now, it is conceivable that both my ex-husband and my ex-in-laws are in trouble because they have no money. My ex-mother-in-law also did a lot of stingy things, such as stealing the ingredients I bought every day and stealing clothes from my closet when there was nothing eye-catching in the ingredients. They must have had no money every day. I feel sorry for them, but I didn't have any intention of helping them. I have been tormented by both my ex-mother-in-law and my ex-husband. It seems that my ex-father-in-law did not know about the situation of the two people. However, since my ex-mother-in-law did not say anything about going to the child's household side every day and bringing back ingredients, he is equally guilty. After that, my ex-mother-in-law continued to leave messages on my phone with the contents of give me money. Reconcile with me, and they accumulated on my phone. There was no contact from my ex-father-in-law or ex-husband, so maybe they are reflecting on their actions. Or maybe they think it's impossible to take money from me, so they don't call me. Even if I continued to ignore the incoming calls from my ex-mother-in-law, her remarks escalated more and more. You know what will happen if you don't give me money. Prepare $50,000 right now. This is clearly extortion. I consulted the police with the record of the answering machine messages so far. As a result, my ex-mother-in-law received a stern warning from the police. There were no fines or arrests, but my ex-father-in-law and ex-husband found that she was caught trying to extort money from me. What are you going to do if you mess up anymore? It will be your fault, and you will have to pay more compensation. When my ex-father-in-law shouted at my ex-mother-in-law, my ex-husband also said. What are you doing, mom? I promised to marry my new girlfriend after I finished paying off my debt. Don't do anything unnecessary. It seemed that the family had a big fight. By the way, my ex-husband's new girlfriend is the woman he cheated on me with at his place of assignment, but she said that she would never approach my ex-husband again after she finished paying her share of the compensation and went back to her parents' house. My ex-husband didn't seem to know that either. After that incident, I never heard from my ex-mother-in-law again. I sometimes hear about my ex-in-laws from acquaintances, but it seems that they are having a miserable life after that, to the point where they say, it seems like the family will eventually break up. However, it's no longer my concern. Since then, I have found a new hobby. I was invited by a friend to go on a trip abroad, which was very enjoyable, and since then, I have been traveling abroad to Europe and Asia every three months. This is something I couldn't do when I was married, so I think I'm currently living the most fulfilling days of my life. From now on, I will continue to enjoy my carefree single life and see more of the world. Her ex-mother-in-law, who enters her house and steals food and clothes, is too much. Her ex-father-in-law, who overlooks it, and her ex-husband, who cheats and doesn't listen to her, are all terrible, and I thought it would be absolutely terrible to live with them. I was frustrated with her husband, who kept her as a money tree by selling her family because her parents were not there. I don't need such a family. I'm really glad Hazel was able to escape. What's left is her ex-father-in-law and mother-in-law, who have no money, and her ex-husband, who was abandoned by both his wife and girlfriend. They are all people who steal or blame everything on others, so I thought they would collapse soon. I want Hazel to enjoy her work and hobbies in a peaceful environment after all the hardships. How was this story? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, please subscribe to the high rating channel. See you in the next video.